Hello and welcome to another part of my quest system series. Before we start today's episode, I just wanted to tell you that I updated my engine to version 4.14.1 and we will use a new feature of that in this video, so definitely download that version yourself. Also I imported some new textures, that is the gold circle and the quest icon. The download link for that will be in the description. Let's actually select both of them. Right click and apply paper to the texture settings. Then we will hit Ctrl S to save that. Also right click on the quest icon and create a sprite of that. Then we'll do the same thing for our gold circle, create sprite. And now the feature of 4.14.1 that you've got a translucent sprite material. If you're working with any other version of the engine you might not have that. So definitely make sure to download the new version. Then let's hit save and close it. Let's drag the gold circle sprite into our level. So we will use that circle when we don't have a defined location for our current goal. But if there's an area that, for example, you have to search in. Let's just rotate that by 90 degrees so it will face our minimap camera. And when we hit play we can see that appearing on our minimap now but we'll actually have to put that into our goal actress. So let's go to, let's actually delete that here. Let's go to actress, BP goal actor. First one will be called used radius, that will be a boolean. Make that editable and expose on spawn. The next one will be the actual radius, that is a float. Editable and expose on spawn, compile, save and set the default value of that to 500. That's just how large the sprite is. Then we will create one more variable that will be the circle color. That will be a linear color, editable and exposed on spawn as well. Set the default value of that to white with an alpha of 1. File and save. Now let's go to our viewport and add another component, which will be a sprite, paper sprite component. Call that mini map radius. The source sprite here will be gold circle sprite. Let's rotate that by minus 90 degrees in X and move that up to 140 in Z. Also, let's scroll down here and collision presets we will set to no collision and uncheck generate overlap events. Now, let's actually open our construction script here. And what we'll do is get our minimap icon, set the visibility, and the new visibility will be the use radius negated. So search for not boolean and connect that to the new visibility. Then we will drag in our minimap radius and set scale, set relative scale 3D. Then we will split the struct pin here. And to get our new scale, we will drag in the radius and divide that by 500. So the width and height of our radius sprite. Then connect that to X and Z. And Y will just set to 1. After that, we will set the visibility of our minimap radius. Visibility will be used radius boolean. And then we'll also need to set sprite color to our circle color. Pass save. Let's also go to the event graph and on event begin play we will just connect the minimap radius to set owner in the C as well. Now we can hit compile and save. Let's just drag in one goal actor into the level. And now you can see when we hit the use radius, our radius appears. If we modify the radius, it becomes larger or smaller. And with the circle color, you can obviously define its color. You can delete that now. But we still need to define that variables for every goal. So let's go to our structures, blueprints, structures, goal info. And we will add some variables here. First one will be called use radius question mark. The next one radius which will be a float 
and finally circle color which will be linear color let's also set the default variables here to white with an alpha of 1 radius of 500 and by default we will just use the normal icon not the radius also we can move that variables to the top in our struct so they appear beneath the ESCO location Alright then hit save, close it, go to the quest info and make sure to also save that. Let's get to our BP quest manager and when we switch our subquest you can see that we've got some new variables. So let's expand the goal info here, connect the use radius, radius and circle color. Compile, save. And if there are some errors, you might need to fix them because we changed some of our structures here. Let's actually go to our structures folder, to the S quest info and move the sub goals here. We will add them now, again, make that a goal info array, save that. Let's go back to our BP quest manager and get off of that, connect that here. There are just some bugs that occur when you change the structs and then you can connect that again everything should just work fine then at least here uh, we might have to go to our widgets folder okay let's go to our sub goal widget because you see there is an arrow here here we will need to connect the sub goals array to the find function then compile, save, and it should work. Also, go to the quest actors, BP Master Quest. Here is another error. Just connect the sub goals to the last index. Compile. And in the update sub goals function, you'll also have to connect that again. Compile and save. What's also really annoying is that you then have to go to our test 1, quest test 2 and we will need to set up our sub goals here again. I would just skip that because you can just set them up however you want them to be. Alright, I've got my quest set up again. Now what we can do is to go to maybe quest 2 and here we will just say that it should use the radius. It also has a location. Let's give it a radius of 800 maybe. Circle color with a light bluish tone of 0.7 maybe. And then we'll also have to find out the location of that. So let's just drag in one of our goal actors. Set the radius to 800 and use radius. Let's move that somewhere here. And then we can just right click, copy the location, go back to our class and paste that here. Hit compile save, move that actor in the level. And when we hit play, press the G key, you can see that our circle appeared here. And if we move far away from it, the arrow shows the direction to it. That was the first part just that I wanted to show. Also, we will work on our AI just a bit more to make it more functional. So we will set up some patrolling behavior. The first thing to do for that is to create a new blueprint class of the type actor. Call that BP underscore patrol point. So we will just place them in the level and our AI will go to the first one, then to the second one and so on. Let's open that and we will add a billboard move that on top of the default scene root so that becomes the default scene root we we'll just do that so we can see them in the level compile and save then let's go to our master npc and add some variables first does patrol question mark make that editable and expose on spawn then the patrol link points that will be a bp underscore patrol point reference array 
also editable and explodes on spawn. And finally an integer called current patrol index. Type integer, not an array and not editable nor exposed on spawn. Then we'll right click somewhere here and add a custom event called move to current patrol point. So what we'll do here is search for AI move to The pawn will be a reference to ourselves. We will check stop and overlap and you can set the acceptance radius to something higher. What I just like to do is use the radius of our capsule component just to avoid that our AI will never reach the point because it collides with it. So 42 that is. And for the destination we will drag in our patrolling points, get from that at our current patrol index and then get actor location on success means that we'll have to go to the next actor so we will set the current patrol index and to find out what the next index is we will use a select node and the index for that will be that the current patrol index is less than the last index of a patrolling points array because then we will start all over again and go to the first patrolling point or if it's false we will just type in zero but if not we will add one to the current patrol index and connect that after that just call move to current patrol point let's put a comment around that Moves to the next patrol point in the patrolling points array. Now we'll also have to start our patrolling behavior somewhere, so let's go to event begin play. And here we will just check whether we do patrol and that there is actually something in our patrolling points area, so get the length and check whether that's greater than zero. Add a branch for that. Connect that to the set text and also to the cast failed, though that should never happen. If that's true, we will call move to current patrol point. And actually, most times NPCs are much slower than the actual character so to do that just go to the character movement component search for max walk speed and set that to something like 200 should work then we can close it and we will need to set up our patrol points now so drag them in somewhere here then hold alt and drag that to create a copy and let's make them go into that corner here and after that he can go back here okay then we will check the dust patrol and add some elements to our array to select the first one just hit that little icon here and you can directly pick that do that for the next one and the third array that will have to go here, check that. And finally, the last actor here. Also, right now, it cannot be working because we need a nav mesh so our AI knows where it can go and where not. To do that, just in the search classes tab here, search for nav mesh, nav mesh bounce volume, drag that in here. And then we'll need to scale that up, set that to 10 maybe or 20 actually move that up here you can hit P to see where your AI will be able to go to okay that looks good then you can hit P again so that goes away and now when we hit play our AI is patrolling around and we can follow it see 
Now it will go to the last point and then start from the beginning again. If we hit E you can get our quest. Something that was suggested in the comments is that our AI has some kind of icon for the minimap to show that it has a quest for us. And let's do that. Let's go back to our master NPC. In the viewport we will add a spring arm. That's really important because we want our sprite to always face the same direction and not turn as our AI turns. So we'll need the spring arm to kind of fix it. Set the target arm length to 450. Rotate that by minus 90 in Y so it faces upwards. Then we will uncheck the collision test and uncheck inherit pitch here on roll. After that we can add a sprite. Paper sprite. Call that quest mark it will be the quest icon here then we can attach that to a spring arm and rotate that by 90 in Z clear the rotation in Y you can also give that a color if you like something bluish or yellow then we will set the collision to no collision and uncheck generate overlap events let's uncheck the visible by default and search for owner no C we will check that and let's go to the event graph and add a boolean here called has quest icon question mark set that to editable and explosive spawn here on event begin play we will need to set the owner to the get player character add player index 0 and let's maybe add some space here because we will need to drag in the question mark and set visibility to the has quest icon boolean well, now we only need to worry about that icon disappearing when we edit the quest so let's go here drag in the question mark set visibility to false. Then we can close it and here we will check the has quest icon, hit play and we can see that icon here. If we hit E and get our quest, we get our quest and the icon disappeared. Alright, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching.